This your boy Brandon. Yeah, that's right. The coolest YouTuber ever. And I'm back with another, another fucking video. And in this video, as you can see, I'm talking about the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X. This is my four month update. And I want to let you guys know, you know, uh, is it worth the hype? And kind of which one, which system I think, you know, is the best or could be right for you. So if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's go! on you know the playstation 5 first you know this is my four month update with both consoles i got them both on launch day i've been really enjoying them but one i kind of been enjoying more than the other you might be surprised though that's the funny part you might be surprised which console i use more which one i kind of not really like more but it's just fun right now so i talk about the playstation 5 first like i said is the playstation 5 worth the hype it's kind of a tough question because i guess it depends on you because anything could be worth the hype if you really love it if you really gonna be playing hours and hours and hours on it so it's kind of really up to you from your perspective you know if it's worth the hype if it's worth the money if it's worth sleeping outside or you know if you paid extra or you know the long wait if, and if you don't have one you're still waiting to get one you know it's kind of it's kind of up to you because once you get it you're going to be playing it all night and day, just like I did. That's that go, you know, for both consoles, but I'm just talking about this one now. My personal experience with the PlayStation 5, you know, it's it actually been great. As far as a lot of people say, not a lot, but a few people said they had bugs and certain games crashing. I think with the PlayStation, mine's been great. Mine's definitely been great. I haven't had no issues that I can think of at all. In the four months I've had it, I haven't had no issues. No loud fan noise, no games cutting off or glitching out. So I think far as that, it's been it's been wonderful. It's been great. Uh my only gripes is uh the lack of games. This system been out, like I said, all pretty much four months at this point. Come out in November. This is February, February 15th to be exact. So almost, you know, four months. And they don't have no exclusive games. Like I pretty much got all the X, I mean the PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4 games. And every game that's on PS5, you can play on PS4. My thing is four months into a system and not one exclusive game that you can't buy on PS4 or you can't buy on the Xbox. I don't understand that. They so, Sony is so worried about rushing out to get these consoles. They're not even putting out quality games. The, now don't get me wrong. I love the PlayStation 5. I've had all the PlayStation 1, 2, 3, 4, and now 5, but it, it's just... It's, there's no exclusive games. And, and now that I beat every game, to me, I think the 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 hype has definitely died out for me. Some of you guys have been playing the same games over and over and over or taking your time beating these games. And a couple of ones I don't got, like, um, call, um what's the other one? Um, Assassin's Creed, I don't got that. And this is a couple of other ones. I don't really like the Assassin's Creed thing, but that's not me. But anyway, um, I beat all the ones I got. And I beat them multiple times. Now I'm playing, like, Red Dead Redemption again and great days gone and grand theft auto and just see how they look different on the playstation 5 and they do look good but do it feel like a next gen console miles morales feel a little bit better than the original you know ps4 spider-man you know certain things is definitely better on miles morales that i actually wish that was in playstation uh, 4 spider-man even the uh, remaster version uh i like it it look good you know the quality look good it just don't feel like a next gen 2020 2021 console it feels like a playstation pro you know maybe even on a computer like a little better graphic like that it, it feels like that versus to how i thought playstation 5 and xbox series x was going to be you know so I, I just think um yes it's worth the hype but no it's not to me worth going out and staying up all night and sp maybe spending double for the console's worth because right now you know it's still hard to get but you can't find the PlayStation 5 or the Xbox Series X, rarely. And, you know, I, I just don't understand that. But the graphics is cool. But to me, it's like I say, it's like having a PlayStation Pro. Uh, if you got a PlayStation Pro right now, it's the graphics and you haven't played PS5, it's not that much better. Is it night and day? Oh my God, this is the best thing I've ever seen better. Absolutely not. Do I think it can get there? 
possibly. I don't know what titles are coming up. Maybe Grand Theft Auto 6. Maybe just blow out Grand Theft Auto uh, 5. And that looks good on here. That still look good. And that came out with 2013. And it looks good, but it's just like, I don't know. I, I guess I thought the jump from PS4 to PS5 is going to be so amazing and quality and graphics and gameplay and all that. It's, to me, it's I really can't tell a super, super difference from when I'm playing PS4 to PS5 besides certain, you know, the faces may look better. Gameplay may be a little smoother, but is it really, you know, if you got a P PS4 Pro, is getting and going crazy to get the PlayStation 5 really worth it? No. To me, it's not. To you, like I say, it may be. And that goes for the Xbox you know, One versus Xbox Series X2. And I'm about to get on that in the Xbox Series X in a second. Is it really worth going out, going crazy, staying up all night, sleeping in the cars, $1,500? <laughs> no, absolutely not. If you can go in the stores and just grab one, of course. Of course you grab it. Of course. It's definitely worth that. It's definitely worth spending the extra retail money on it. But I would not advise anyone to, at this point, to stand in line call 50 times a day. I know you guys want it. And that's how I felt too. When I first got it, I stayed up all night. I uh, went to the stores. I did pretty much everything you guys are doing now and did too to get this. But me looking back four months four months ago, um, I, I wouldn't do it again. Just like I say, right now, there is no exclusive games. And after you beat Spider-Man, Call of Duty, Watch Dogs, 2K, and like uh, Assassin's Creed and a couple other ones that's out. <laughs> yeah. You know, and then as you're playing them, you're like, this is not that amazing. Is it? I was hyped to play Miles Morales and stuff like that, but after I beat it, it was like, it's not that much better than a PlayStation 4 Spider Man. It's not that much better. But now to touch on the Xbox Series X, I've been playing it for a lot more. I actually, the funny thing is, I know some of you Sony people are going to thumbs the video diamond because you think I'm knocking Sony. I'm not. I obviously love both. And I spent hours and hours of playing PlayStation 5, but I haven't been playing it in like three weeks. I haven't touched. This system hasn't turned on in three weeks. I haven't. And I've been playing Xbox Series X every day. I just got um, the Dying Light um, Anniversary Edition. And I beat it on PlayStation 4. And uh, the Anniversary Edition got a couple more that, you know, that, uh, downloaded content that you can use, stuff like that, and it looks amazing. Is it do, do it look a lot better than the Xbox One or One X? No, but it, it looks good. And then the one thing I love about um, Xbox Series X is the the quick resume. I promise you, once you experience quick resume on the console and how fast it loads up, as soon as I come back to Xbox One and I click the game, it's there already, ready to go. And that PlayStation don't have that. Are they going to get it? I don't know. But they definitely are lacking that feature. I think if PlayStation had that feature, it probably would blow out the Xbox Series X. Mm, I don't know. That, that's that's still debatable. That's like an Apple Android thing. It's kind of like what you're used to. If you're used to, you know, Microsoft, if you're used to Sony and their PlayStation or Xbox, that's what you're going to you know, gravitate to. That's what you're going to actually want to buy and spend all your time on. But me, I love both. Just like I love Apple, just like I love Android. I got to have them both. And there's a lot of people that just like me that feel like they got to have both systems and both you know, phones, whatever. But with the Xbox Series X, that quick resume, if you haven't experienced it, I know the Xbox people watching this, I know you guys, for the titles, the game that you got, if they have quick resume on it, I know you like, this is, I can't go back to a system that you got to wait five minutes for it to load up. Do y'all remember Grand Theft Auto 5? How long it took to get past that low screen? About five minutes. You sitting waiting. And the Xbox, and this, that game came out, Dying Light came out like six years ago, I think. Five, six years ago. Don't get, don't get me wrong. Um, but it got quick resume. So as soon as I'm done slicing up some zombies, I'm like, I'm done with the game. Cut it off. Cut it on a day or two or hours later, whatever. Boom. Right back in action. And that's on a lot of the titles, especially on Game Pass. And that's another thing where Game Pass kills Sony and PlayStation is that PlayStation Plus, whatever, 10 games they got on there is cool, but the Game Pass has a lot and they're going to keep updating it. You know, I, I'm not even saying I love or like the Xbox better than the PlayStation. It's just right now what it do is better than the PlayStation. Like, it's way better. Quick resume, uh, uh, Game Pass, um, f almost every game says 4K at 120 out the box. PlayStation, 90% of the games play at 60, except for like, I think, uh, Call of Duty as, as of this video. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's just Xbox right now to me is beating PlayStation. 
and I I love my PlayStation, but to me it's more like like how Apple is. It's more of the hype than it is the features. You see what I'm saying? Like, please don't thumb my video down because you think I'm bashing Sony or you think I'm bashing Microsoft or Apple or Android. No, I love them both, so I buy everything. I'm a tech show. I buy everything. When I get bored to Xbox, I just jump on Game Pass, download World War Z or Batman game or something like that to play quickly. I ain't got to go worry about buying games. So for whatever reason, as of the last month, I've been playing Xbox Series X every single day. Of course, I love the Dying Light game. And I got the Zombie Days Gone game on here, and I'm going to be playing that soon. But am I, like, I don't know. I, I won't say I'm a more of a, a, a Microsoft fan right now than I am a Sony fan because when I first got both of them, I don't even think I played the Xbox not one time for weeks because I was playing this because PlayStation 5 is amazing. And don't get me wrong, it's amazing. And if I didn't have it, I'd be searching for one too, but I wouldn't play double the money. Like I said earlier, I would not pay double the money or sleep outside or nothing. But they both have to get better. As far as, um, even people say Xbox Series X had a lot of glitches. And this is funny that I don't know if you watched my other, pre one of my other Xbox videos I made. Um, I actually took my very first Xbox Series X back because I got it from Target and I took it back because all my games just kept force closing the system and shutting down, I should say, the system. Force closing the game and shutting down the system. And I was, I don't understand. I had Call of Duty, I had um, some other game. Um, I can't remember what that. I had Watch Dogs on there too. And I got, I ended up getting both of them on here. I actually, GameStop, that's, you know, that's another conversation. GameStop let me trade those games in to get these without actually spending any other money. But like I say, the Xbox was crashing everything I played. I'm talking about to the point where it cut my TV off, my sound bar stayed on with this loud sound, but my TV cut off, the Xbox cut off. It was crazy. And I was saying I was done with Xbox. And then I'm like, you know what? I found another one. And um, I was like, let me just get it. You know, I went to got it. I went to go get it again. And I've been playing it ever since, you know. So I don't know if it was just that one. Clearly, to me, it was just that console that I had that was bad. But when I got now, no problems, glitches, nothing. No force closing games, nothing. And my PlayStation been fine, too. Don't overheat, get hot. Sound that, that sound noise everybody was saying in, a few months ago about the PlayStation, I don't have those problems. And I'm sorry if you guys are having those problems or you did have the problem and you had to sell your system because of it. That sucks. Like I said, I had to take my Xbox because of it. I was mad. I had spent all this money on controllers, extra controllers, games, uh, the remotes. Like, I bought all the accessories, the official stuff for this. I got the PlayStation official stuff. I got them, all, you know, I had all that on there too. I already think they're worth the hype. But at the same time is, you know, to answer people, a lot of people questions who've been uh, asking me, which console, if I could only have one, which one would I choose? So if you made it this far in the video, that's the big million dollar question. And if you can, give me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, turn your post notifications on, because I do have a giveaway coming up soon. Like I said, the million dollar question is, which console would I buy if I only had to choose one it's a tough question of course it goes back to what are you used to you know that's kind of like what you got to ask yourself what are you used to you used to sony you used to microsoft do you are you sick of one you want to switch to the other one you know uh i think to be honest i, I probably still would choose ps5 and i don't know why it's, it's probably the reason why i choose apple as my daily driver over android not saying I don't use, I don't love the Z Fold 2 or the Note 20 Ultra or the Galaxy S21 Ultra. I love all those phones, but for whatever reason, my daily driver always go back to Apple. Just like I know once I'm done playing like Dying Light, you know, maybe a couple of other games, I'm going to go back and start playing Sony again. I don't know why. And most, for whatever reason, I think it's more people that's, that are really Sony fans or PlayStation fans than it is Microsoft. That's just what it seems like. I could be completely wrong, but it's just, when I talk to people, that's what they say. They say they're a Sony fan. And I only hear a few people say they're Microsoft fans. So leave me a comment right now and let me know which system you want, what system you got, what system you love it, what system you would never buy, you know, because you loyal to whichever one. Let me know. Leave me a comment right now and let me know. You know, me, I know a lot of you guys feel like me where you have to have both systems. So if you like that, you know, give me a thumbs up. So, with that being said, this your boy Brandon. Get us right, the coolest YouTuber ever. Please hit that subscribe button. Do got the giveaway coming up.
and I thank you guys for uh, just rocking with me this far. And you know, if you made it this far in the video, that means you know you, you actually watch my content, and you you right now watching this mean everything to me. Appreciate love each and every one of you guys. And you know when I do the giveaway, I pray that it goes to to you guys who really rock with me. Thank you guys for watching again. I'm out. Peace.